What are you doing, friend? <laughs> I'm picking dinner. Radishes and lettuces. Lovely evening. It's a beautiful evening. Things need re sowing, you know. Radishes are not very good. What delights have we got for us teas tonight, friend? For supper, we have <laughs> <laughs> just salad. But we've got still picking our leaves. They're beginning to go a little bit um, old now. I've got to re sow some more picking our leaves. These are the salad onions, which about three videos ago, I just put the tip of the onion after we'd used them in the to roots. grow the, the roots on. And we've got these, so we're using those in the salads now. The beetroots. The beetroots. Radish. <laughs> they don't the look very good, lot of do radishes they? are not really ready yet. So, mm. new potatoes, broccoli quiche. Yeah, but look at that quiche. Who made that? Me did. Oh, lovely. Yep, that's okay. I think it will be nice. So we cruised about eight miles yesterday to get here. Uh, Bosley Locks, flight of 12 locks, which have been closed for the last few weeks, um, but are now open just for today only. And uh, it's now about nine o'clock. They apparently opened at eight. So I'm just going for a walk to see what's happening. So uh, we've got just five hours to get through. And uh, we reckon there's about 20 boats waiting to go through. So uh, yeah. I think we've got a long wait. A lot of people manoeuvring and jostling for position. And it doesn't look like there's much progress through the locks at the moment, judging by the amount of boats still up here. Well, this is interesting. They've had the bottom paddle open here and also the top paddle open. So they're obviously feeding more water into this pound here. And there is a boat, you can see, in the distance at the next lock. So maybe this pound was a little low already. Doesn't bode well. So these two paddles are open, but only halfway. So they're slowly, slowly letting us all through. I guess so, there isn't a, a bottleneck further down the lock flight and uh, using water more economically I suppose. So 
Let's go out and put the kettle on. Yeah, so apparently there's been a bit of a shortage of water in one of the pounds further down. They've been pumping water in the canal further up and uh, obviously not enough. So apparently about five or six boats have gone down and uh, they're moving quite quickly. So we'll get through no problem. Well, we've managed to move about eight boats further down the line, I think. So uh, nothing come up the other way yet, but uh, everything's moving slowly. But it's only about 10 o'clock-ish, so plenty of time. Well, it's now 11.30. The locks have been open for three and a half hours. And uh, we are still seventh in the queue. <laughs> so only apparently about eight boats have gone down now. So it's very slow progress. What we don't want is uh, Canal and River Trust to just close the locks at one o'clock, as they've said, and said, say, that's it, no more boats. I can't imagine them doing that, Fran, can you? No, and if the worst comes to worst, the locks are open for a, a day in a week's time, but it just means we're going to have to hang around for another week, um, which we don't really want no. to do. I think there might be a sit-in protest if they try and close the locks. Yeah, I will, throw, I will throw my windlass off the boat. <laughs> but no, we'll see. Can't do anything about it, but watch and wait. Do you know what, don't you? It is what it is. It is what it is. Right, it's quarter past 12, another boat's turned up and uh, they've been told that the locks are going to close at 1 so they might not get a chance to get through but it's getting a bit fractious down there. The CRT guys, Canal and River Trust guys have just emptied a lock full of water, no boat, in, so a boat can come up. Well that's just not what you do, you don't waste water like that, you send a boat down with you and it's not like there isn't room the other side of the lock for boats to queue up for the next lock. So there's a bit of argy bargy going on down there, <laughs> I'm keeping out of it. I've had a word with the CRT guys and told them, look we've been here 24 hours, you know, we are going to get through aren't we? He went, yeah no problem, you'll be fine. But uh, tempers are getting frayed. This lovely old boat behind us. The hull is uh, over 120 years old and it's got a 1950s Lister engine. It's wonderful. Definite boat envy. Well, we managed to get onto the lock flight, thank goodness. There's a queue of about three boats behind us. And for some reason, we're having to queue at each lock at the moment. There's about four or five boats queuing for each lock. So it's going to be a very, very slow process. Rich is up helping with the locks. There's quite a little team of people doing that now and the rest of us are just driving through. I've been and got my wild flower book and we've got some fantastic plants along the towpath here. So I'm just going to spend my time having a look and seeing what we've got.
Hilton. We've been here for just one night and been to the shops this morning. Quick little stopover. This is the third time we've been here in two years. Yes. We're repeating ourselves now. So we've been to the supermarket, stocked up on food for a few days and uh, just want to move really, get out of the town in somewhere a bit more remote. Hopefully we'll be able to find a suitable spot. We managed to get through the locks all right the other day, didn't we? Um, it was a long day, it was lots a long of waiting day. around. Really good spirit between everybody, wasn't there? We had, to, you know, everybody was helping everybody else out. The boat in front was setting the locks for us. We were setting it for the lock coming up, and it was just good. It was good fun, but a long day. Yeah, yeah, things were getting a bit fractious with some of the boaters before we all set off because they didn't think the Canal and River Trust guys were being quick enough. Yeah, there's so, a bit of shouting and hollering. There's a bit of shouting and hollering going on, so it's uh, kept out of that one. Um, but yeah, so lovely day. Yesterday and the day before was just rotten, miserable, wet weather, so we stayed good, more or less. Yeah. And uh, just off for a little cruise Back now. For a sh yeah, just a, sh you say, a short one just to get the countryside and um, enjoy our weekend, isn't it? And I think there might be a bit more hair cutting going on because I can't oh, see where great. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so we're heading back onto uh, the Middlewich branch of the Shropshire Union. We've got lots and lots of locks to do before we get there. We've got to go down Heartbreak Hill on the Trent and Mersey Canal first. But we are heading to the Hangoflin Canal in Wales. And uh, that'll be the first time we've been outside England, won't it, on the boat? Of course yeah, it will, of course yeah, it will. Of course it will, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, if we can get there. At the moment, we can't get outside England. No, we can go so far along, can't we? So we're going to do that. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll open up the uh, Welsh border so we can all get through. If not, we'll just turn around and come back the other way. But uh, Well Deck Diaries are heading that way too, so hopefully we're going to meet up with them and share a gin and tonic. Yeah, uh, we've got the older flower cordial. As long as they've got the gin, we'll be OK. And don't I don't think there's much worries about that, is there? <laughs> If you don't follow Well Deck Diaries, go and have a look. They're a lovely couple, Mark and Debs. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. It's going to take. How long will it take us to get to the Clangoflin Canal? Well, our I think it's speed. about yeah. I think it's about 35 miles from here. About a month then. About a month, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be gone and off by then. <laughs> Socially distancing golf. Look at his electric buggy, look. Oh my god, look at that. It takes all the effort. It's got out a of remote golfing. control buggy. Is it remote control? Or it just looks electric? like it's remote control, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We had a lot of comments on last video about the Cavalier Way in which I threw that key off the back of the boat to Fran on the towpath. This is the key. And it does have a floating fob or a fob that floats. And uh, yeah, well, I've tested it, it does keep this key afloat. Although I wouldn't want to put any more on than that. The other type of fob that we have is this one. Everybody's got one of these on the boats. Um, not sure how many keys that, that'll hold, but it doesn't need to hold any more than that. But the other one, which was given to us as a present when we moved on the boat, is this. Now this apparently has a balloon inside and only inflates when it comes into contact with water. So the only way you're going to know if you get your key back is if you put it in the canal <laughs> and have it inflate. And then it's no good anymore. And then it's, you can't use it <laughs> after that. So uh, this is our main key that we use for the front door as well, isn't it? Yeah, so, but we have got spares and we have yeah. got one hidden away somewhere as well. So we're all right. It's I am quite problem. tempted to throw this in and see if it surfaces, but then and it's no good, is it? It's no good if it doesn't. <laughs> Mind you, we get the magnet out. We, ha out, we haven't yet lost a key. We've lost lots of stuff to the cut, haven't we? Yeah, no, no Phones, key. Um, chimneys, chimney cowlings, oh, I don't know, all sorts of stuff. Plant pots. We have a spare key secreted on the boat that no one will ever find because it's uh, such a, such a really place. stupid place. But Anyway, so if we ever do lose a key while we're out and about, we can find the key on the boat, which 
is under the water level, so don't bother coming to find it. <laughs> That's better. Out of the town, in the sticks. Looks like it's quite popular with uh, continuous cruisers. What do you think, Fran? Happy with this? We've done another lovely spot. Done it again, haven't we? Yep. And every time we moor up, you get sometimes that you get a bit worried about moving on because you've got a lovely spot and you don't quite know where you're going ahead. And uh, especially during lockdown, when we were stuck in the same place for so long, you began to feel like it was home, didn't you? Yeah, and, no. and I actually became a little bit nervous about moving, moving on, towards yeah. the end of it. Yeah. But it just seems at the moment that every time we move, we find a better spot. Yeah, it is lovely. <laughs> so this is so peaceful. It's lovely. Really lovely. Yes, so uh, done it again. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together 